In the maze-like city of Labyrinth, where ancient orange stone walls twist and turn through winding alleys, a lone figure moves with purpose, radiating an aura of mystical power and melodic grace. Clad in enchanted studded leather, adorned with magical jewels, the bard mage weaves spells with the fluidity of a master musician. The air hums with the eerie melody of his provocation, causing nearby beasts to turn on each other in chaotic fury. He raises his arcane spellbook, and poisonous mists spiral forth to ensnare and debilitate his foes. Summoned guardians emerge to defend their master, and each spell is a precise strike in the grand concerto of battle. The battlefield is his stage, where every motion blends artistic elegance with raw power. The bard mage, a beacon of both hope and dread, stands as a testament to the potential of a master of the arcane arts. In this realm where magic and strategy converge, the role of the provocation mystic poisoner exemplifies how mastery can be elevated. By harnessing the unique capabilities of the Provo Mystic Mage and integrating the art of poisoning through the Mage Spell, Poison Field, one can achieve remarkable feats. To realize this potential, my character employs skill jewelry, each enhancing mysticism, focus, and magery by plus 15, complemented by the Mystic's Memento, which boosts focus by an additional plus 10. This setup totals 100 extra skill points, the exact amount needed to maximize poisoning and ensure that Poison Field reaches its full effectiveness. Focus has a real skill level of 80, Majory is at 90, Mysticism is also 90, and Poisoning is 100. The other skills are all at a real skill level of 120. Meditation isn't necessary because my character uses imbued studded leather with mana regeneration and lower mana cost, and evaluate intelligence is dropped. For skill mastery, I use Mysticism to gain Nether Blast, which helps refresh mana. Without Evaluate Intelligence, offensive spells like Energy Bolt are much less effective, as is Curse most of the time. However, Mysticism and Spell Weaving spells remain very effective. Alternatives within Mysticism include Bombard, which has a similar mana cost and casting time to Energy Bolt and deals physical-based damage, or Eagle Strike, which is less potent but quick, with a low mana cost and energy-based damage. Additionally, Mysticism and Spell Weaving offer several Area of Effect spells and the powerful Word of Death. Many Majory spells, such as Greater Heal, Arch Cure, Invisibility, and other utility spells, do not depend on Evaluate Intelligence. Offensive spells become secondary with the other tools available, such as Full Strength Summons, Poison Fields, and Provocation. Summons serve as the front line of defense, and when enemies are stationary, poison fields are deployed. Tougher enemies can be provoked onto each other, followed up with area of effect spells like wildfire, and direct damage spells on selected targets. Gear selection is based on personal preference, except for skill jewelry and imbued studded leather. The spellbook is optional. My character uses a scrapper's compendium, which can be swapped with a Slayer spellbook to deal double or triple damage against Slayer types without affecting my skill set. I also use the Holy Grail Quest Provocation Cloak Reward Item to overcap provocation to 130. Except for skill jewelry, all required gear is inexpensive, and Crystalline Blackrock can be easily farmed over time from Rat Cave in Ilshiner, providing a cost-effective alternative to purchasing the ingredient. An alternative build involves swapping mysticism, spell weaving, and focus the summoner skills for taming, lore, and veterinary the tamer skills. The Provo Mystic Poisoner builds on the success of the Provo Mystic Mage and the Mystic Mage Poisoner, combining their best aspects into a single, powerful build. 